Now we're going to look at the life cycle of our application. And what I'm going to do is set some breakpoints so we can see how things kind of flow through. So we are going to start in the program file and then we're going to go into the startup file. And I am just going to go ahead and run this now. And we'll start hitting these breakpoints. All right, so here we are. And you can see we're starting off here, the entry point, which again looks like a console application. So we're gonna do this another way after we walk through this. All right, so we have our build host here bringing in arguments, of which there are none. So why would you have arguments? This goes back to console app, which we're gonna look at shortly. So I'm gonna go ahead and step over that. And now we run into our build host. So obviously, cause it was called there, bringing in the arguments as well, if there are any. And then we get into this build up here, which did a lot of other things. It was broken out into several steps in the core one version. Now they've wrapped it all up into just one method call. Then we're gonna go into our startup from there. So here we are, inside of configure. And down here, we just go through using this injection of instances for app, we check which uh, environment we are on. So it says it knows we are on development. We're gonna go through that. Then right here, finally, we get to the end of it and we spit out a string into the stream and we can see there, hello world. And we're running on localhost, of course. So I'm gonna stop this now. So what I'm gonna do is grab our path over here where the project is and just go out to the command line and paste that in. So let's see, I'm gonna CD paste this in and just do a dir so we can make sure we're in the right place so this is core 2 empty all right so from here what i can do is dot net run and run that now watch what happens here so you can see we're starting up we've got a handle to a local host here 51018 and if i go ahead and just copy that like that, hit enter. Now go back to our browser. And I am just going to go ahead and pin the menu because it's getting stuck with the other menu. All right, so we look where we came from. So just paste that in up here, hit enter. The same application, we're also getting our info outputs down here as well. You can run these just like a console application. And right here after .NET run, I could have put in a .NET run space with some uh, different kind of parameters in it as well. So that is another way to run it. Now, if you do it this way, keep in mind that it's running in the background. So if you go back to Visual Studio and run it, it's gonna go into a different port, but you may run into problems later on when you're trying to add files or something like that because it can lock your process. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that out. And you can see here, control C to shut down, which is what I did there. And if I try to refresh it now, the web server is not gonna be running. And you can see it's trying to find it, but can't find anything. And then you get the page cannot be displayed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these different breakpoints. And so that is just a quick look at how this startup runs. We kick off with our program page and there's not a lot in here right now. Then we move on into startup where you're gonna do a lot of configuration if you wanna add other middleware and do different things like that. So we'll see how that's done. So we're going to look at as well how to add or access some other services in here. So for example, you might wanna add a configuration file and then read something out of that. And that's what we're going to do now. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this and make sure that your Instance is not running uh, for your application, which mine is not. So I'll do add new item. And what I want to do is a configuration file. So I'm just gonna type that in and let it go and find it. Let's see, asp.net, config file. And I do want a JSON file, which this is. So app settings.json, and I'll just add that. And it's gonna come with, um, you can see here a connection string, which I'll just leave that in there because if I'm not accessing it, it doesn't really matter but I am going to add another variable and I'll just add it down here. And let's see, I'm gonna need a comma there. So for this right here, I'm just gonna do my var. 
And I, while I'm in here, I can just type in my semicolon and it'll jump me out. And I'll do my var message and save. So now I wanna access this. I'm gonna go into startup and I am gonna add a new constructor. So for that, it's just going to be public startup. And then in here, I am going to access I configuration. So I'll put that as a parameter and just call it lowercase configuration. And then I'll right click on this to let it resolve. So go ahead and add that. There we go. And then we have the resolve on that. And then I'm going to create a property that I can store that in. So I'll just call this a public I configuration and just call it configuration. Add a get set. Probably could have just used the prop uh, short hand like this to create that. There you go. All right, so in here, I am going to assign my property. So configuration equals configuration. And this is going to be with a capital C. And it says it doesn't exist because I've actually misspelled it here. So I'm just gonna paste over that. That works now. And then down here, I want to go ahead and get access to that. So instead of this, we're going to grab our variable, which is going to be configuration. And I'll drop in my var as a string because this is basically accessing as a dictionary. So drop in your key, get back your value. And let's go ahead and run that now. All right, so there we are. And there is our output. So there are a few other things that can be done in here and making use of this uh, app run section, for example. So if we want to restrict this a little bit, we can do something like, let's say I, if context request path, and it's probably not something you'll want to do, but just to demonstrate what you can do. And I am going to do the await in here. So I'm just going to copy it, paste. All right, so basically what this means now is nothing's going to happen unless we have that in the past. So let's go ahead and run this and see what kind of output we get initially because we know we're not going to have that in our path. So the page is blank. And if we look at this and see what kind of HTML it might be spitting out, we can see everything's pretty much empty at this point. So let's go to our path tester and hit enter. There we are. So you progress through this right here, and we're gonna see this a little bit more when we start really getting into more middleware type of inspection at, and then looking at this a little bit more in depth. But there is a progress that you go through, and you hit the endpoint down here, and you may or may not reach it depending on what happened above you. So you just have to be mindful of that. And let's look at one more thing. So I'm gonna go into the, the output for the web server. And you can see here, we're getting mostly info on our logging. Let's go into our ASP.NET or appsettings.json file and add some additional logging. So I'm going to add a comma. And for our next node, we're just going to have logging. And then in here, I'm going to open this up with a brace. I'm going to have a structure. So log level. And then we're going to have another structure. I'm going to set default to warning and save. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run that and then we're gonna take a look at our output. I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this out down here and I may have to clear this once more. Let's see, go ahead and clear that so we can really see the logging coming in now. Uh, let's see, this is running. So we need to go to our restriction here which we just have tester in the URL Let's see, we're not getting any output there. So I'm gonna go back into our startup and just let everything run without the restriction. So for that, I'll just comment this out. Say that. So there's nothing here now. We're gonna go ahead and start this again. And warning is the most strict type of logging. So we're not likely to really see anything there but I just wanna get our output on the default. So there it is. Now let's go look at the 
output for the web server. Notice we don't have any, any more infos. So let's go make another change to this and go do debug. Save that and run. All right, so there's our output. Let's go check the console. So notice now it's not just info, but also debug that's coming through. And it was very easy, you, as you can see, just to add this level of logging. We didn't have to go in and do all kinds of other configurations, do some application level type of settings or anything like that, any kind of modifications to those settings. We just set it in here, and now we're getting the kind of output that we want, targeted output. So we can go back to info, information if we want, and we'll see those info outputs as well. All right, so that's about to output. I'm just gonna go back to our core, to our server here for the web server. And let's see, scroll down. This is where we started. And now we're just getting the infos. If I scroll up a little bit to the previous session, you can see the debug and the infos were in there as well. And then of course we saw with warning, we didn't get any output. So that's just a look at the life cycle and some of the things that you can do because dependency injection is there. It's always there. And that's why we're able to do a lot of this without having to create instances and build out the dependencies for those instances. There's just a lot that's kind of floating around inside of a dependency manager in the web host environment that we can just reach up and start grabbing really easy, really quick. So what we're going to look at next is middleware and what middleware is all about.